Just so you know, during our special time here together tonight, there, uh, there might be sudden music and singing. And it might happen together. And I'm not saying this will or will not occur, but uh, I'm not ruling out funny movements. You know, like synchronized seizures or convulsions. <laughs> Dancing. And uh, <laughs> like a three-ring circus of building emotion that is far too explosive and enormous to contain in a regular Joe conversation. Musical theater, or as some like to call it, life. <laughs> okay, you've all been warned. We now, if, if you want, or if you can. <laughs> okay, a couple of things. We're, uh, we're going to be using some things that look like paint cans. Not paint, just compressed air. No freakouts. <laughs> and also, turn off those, those, you know, those funny machines that are supposed to make you be smart but end up making you look stupid like you're looking for a contact lens that you're holding in your hand. Yeah. There's no, uh, there's no app for this thing, this uh, life. Can I get my money now? Yes, but no more work today. You want more? Building next door. See it. In LA traffic, it looks like Hawaii is backed up on the 101. Looks to be a body in the right lane. We can't really tell. Maybe even a mannequin. We're waiting for EMT crews to get on the scene. We'll let you know. Give you more information in a minute. Oh, yeah. 
You get a life. You first. first. Fuck my life. Fuck my life. Well, fuck our lives. No, seriously. Well. Dude, this bus hopping is for the buzzards. When do you get your car back? When you can grow up and be a respectful and responsible human being and babysit your sister's kids. Wait, when do you get your car back? Think. Oh, gee, I gotta go. This is my stop. But um, I'll see you later, right? At the spot? Hey, bye! bus here, but you can make a fast bus by combining two slow ones. How does that make sense? I got it all up here. You always catch the bus at the wrong stop anyway. You gotta, you gotta catch the bus after it's built up a little momentum away from the congestion at the station. Uh, I'm never taking the bus again. <coughs> well, not until tonight. It really sucks not having my car. Well, when do you get it back? I gotta do some community service, I don't know, six months. Community service? Okay, here's what you have to do. You want the uh, uh, cleaning the windows or painting if they still have that. Picking up roadside trash and matching PJs, that's not for the weak. And uh, you get honked and yelled at. Who needs that? Grace has been asking about you. Nice segue. What does she want? 
She wants to meet you Tuesday at two at the pinhole. Said you would know the place. And she wasn't very happy that you stopped by last week with your spare key. I, I had to get something. You don't have anything there anymore. How would you know? How would she know? I, I, is she picking up the tab? If she is, I'll be there with fucking bells on. Two o'clock on Tuesday. God, I, I don't want to meet her and... Uh, where is our food, man? Dude, we haven't even ordered yet. I mean, can we get two specials with fried rice? Yeah, Pepsi's fine, and can we get it to go? I hate Pepsi, and, and why to go? Because you have to be at the shelter by seven. Oh, fuck that place. I hate that free holiday in prison. <laughs> 100. 100. What was that? What does that mean? It's the imaginary sum of money I pay myself every time you embarrass me in public. I just made 100 bucks for having everybody in the restaurant look at us. Well, if you're worried about Ming overhearing us, don't worry. He don't speak English. <laughs> Feeling racist today? <laughs> We live in a racist city, a racist country. I'm just pointing it out. Why aren't we a tad bit sensitive today? I don't know what you do before we meet every week, but your outbursts are getting a little hard to tolerate. Uh, uh, outbursts? Well, let's, let's just live in your world, in your life imagination. Do you get uh, paid for painting? Do you? No. Well, some of us live in reality. Hey, why don't you show me that hundred bucks you just made? Come on, show it to me, goddammit. Look, I'm sorry, we both had shitty days. Uh, you know, I, I know this isn't a fast food place, Ming, but in this day and age of instant gratification, you would think that you could get our food out a little quicker! Volume, dude. We just oh, ordered. Oh, Cut oh, me some slack. Oh, oh, damn, you microwave, damn, you drive throughs Oh. I should enjoy the thought of the food coming, because once it's, it, it gets here, it's going down fast. Once it gets here, you're going on the bus. The, uh, the, 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 the signals are already moving from my tongue to my parietal lobe. And the food isn't even here yet. That's amazing. I mean, the food isn't even here yet! Calm down. What are you, five? Actually, don't eat to that. Sorry. I always had trouble processing information, having the time to do it. I mean, sometimes it comes in a, in a river, and sometimes it's just trickles, and I get irritated when it happens at the same time. Back then, back then I had all the time in the world. I mean, I never was on time, <laughs> but uh, who, who needed to be on time when you were soaking up life? I mean, sometimes the scope and, and depth of something, you don't really understand it until it's, it's, it's gone. And you had it in your hand, you held it in your hands. And I, I held it in my hands and that was enough. Some people need to hold it, but not me. I held it and I let it go. And now, I mean, I'm pretty lucky. I, I got everything I need in my pockets. How many people can say that? <laughs> Never thought in a million years the time had trickled down and leave us here. Funny how lives change when you're not looking. Your brain likes playing games with what's not there. Stakes for future fools. 
we learn along a winding road of misfires. When will someone tell me all those rules? They are all riding one fucking powerful wave of singing feelings we once fucked away. We are shattered piles of plans that we made. It was good till it ended. It's not quite what we intended. It's all good till it ended at least. It was the most beautiful sunset I ever saw. Yes. Uh, I really don't want to see her, but yes. Tell the Grace yes. I'll see her. Here. Take this. A sunset. That's that's beautiful. But you could you were, you were always so talented. I mean, you always were. I. You are. I thought you could put it on your wall or in your pocket. Love you, Dad. Right back at you, Georgie. I'll, uh, I'll see you, son. Later. A hundred dollars? Where did he get a hundred dollars? Let's see. Halfway house? Or... Taxi! <laughs> Yet important to the plot, hot sex. <laughs> Maybe I'm meant to write erotic fr 
erotic fiction for straights who appreciate a gay love story set in a nation torn apart by a vegan war. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's not ready for public consumption. It is, it's me. You don't let me read your black book. Besides, G, it's got some major tweaking to be tweaked. In time. In time. Hey, G, where do you see yourself in three years? It's random. Well, do you even think you'll be in LA? Well, where are you gonna be? I don't know, I used to have a five-year plan, but then Years one and two totally went to shit, so I went for more of like a see how things work out kind of plan. Hey, you want to go to a party tonight? Whoa, I was at a bar when you were gonna be my lookout tonight. But they'll have stuff. Yes, there. Oh, I see what's going on. I know you. You were never waiting in an alley for three hours. Stop! Practically there. Whose party is it? Brandon. No way, that dude treats you like a piece of meat. Well, maybe Isis wants to be tender grass tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I saw my check for the paper coffee conversation while it's on the beach in Rose. I already get all of that stuff with you. Remember those roses you drew me? They were really pretty. Wait, I think I have them. Let's just stay here and do our thing. I write, you write. Come on, Brandon is totally ignorable. We'll go, we'll have some drinks. Look, look what I have. What? We'll have a good time, we'll hang out. You'll get some sketch ideas from all the witty conversations you have with people you find out you really don't like. Come on, for me, you know you want to.
sad to say you're in no shape to go anywhere but home. I'm hungry! I'm hungry, I'm getting snacks. Just go to Splits and get some food away from me over there. Okay. And please, don't steal anything. <gasps> Racist! It is, you know you do that stuff, and I'm pretty sure it's not because of the color of your skin. I don't want to deal with it, not tonight, not in this neighborhood, and not with me on probation. You are so lucky you graduated already. Private school is so much worse than public school. <laughs> I cannot wait until I get out of this shithole. Why are you out here doing what it is that got you in trouble in the first place? What is not going to do? Steal everything! Everything. I'm taking my bags. And I'm cleaning them out. Just get some coffee and sit at the counter, and then we'll take the bus home together. Fine. And we'll live happily ever after. <laughs> oh, and give me some nerds of sweet tarts. I've got your tarts right here, and they're real sweet. <laughs> As for nerds, you're on your own, bitch. <laughs> <laughs>
timing. Our bus is here. Maybe we can get home fast. That store was totally out of touch with consumerism. They had tab, but they didn't have sweet tarts. What is that smell? It smells like a Korean apartment building and all the dinners mixing in as you walk in. Racist much? Sorry, it was the first thing that popped in my head. Maybe you should have some of what I'm having, because it super takes the edge off. I'm good, I'll stick to the nerds. Yeah. You know, you never answered my question about where you thought you saw yourself in three years. What do I look like, a fortune teller? Yes. All right, I'll play. I'll be living in a New York City artist loft, sketching by day and bombing by night. I'll have fallen for a sexy macho mustache dude who wears a cape. Cool. Because capes will be in by then. I don't think so. And when I say in <laughs> cape, I mean like a superhero cape, not a gay pack cape. Oh, it sounds super gay. I don't know. Not super gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool shoes. He has to have cool shoes. Shows how a good man lives his life. True. You know, knowing my family, I'll probably have like 4.5 kids, run a daycare center, sell some Avon. <laughs> no college for you? No college for you? No, I think I'm gonna start a Latino baby farm. <laughs> Studies show it's cheaper to adopt Latin babies. Oh, if you can bring it in under cost, you can rake in a fortune. <laughs> that would pay for my art supplies. <laughs> nah, I'm just messing. I would never wish anyone to be adopted. It's a rough road. Speaking of rough roads, I think our driver's drunk! He totally is hitting every pothole and he almost hit that guy that's getting on right now. What, you didn't see me? Thanks for not hitting me. Anyways, what I'm saying is Bel Air is just not the place to raise a Latino family. Look, I've lived here my whole life, and every time I walk into a grocery store, I still get that, like, fresh Prince of Bel Air look. You know what I mean? Oh, is it my fault that my dad invented one little part that goes on every airplane? I don't think so! <laughs> Whatever, I'm graduating soon, and then I'm going to take a trip to Paris and live amongst the Belizeans. So I gotta feel good. Work? You? I don't think so. <laughs> it's a friend of Tony, so we'll see. Well, I promise I will be out before the queen arises. You can sleep in the guest room. Yes. 
Okay, I'll be out by seven, I swear. I got shit to do anyway. Is that guy in the back of the bus looking at us? He's checking his phone. <gasps> he just looked at me, he's totally into me. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure he was checking me out when he slowly lingered on the bus. Um, I'm pretty sure he was checking me out because they're really hot. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually kind of funny. So, so this is a gay bar. A gay bar. I have a feeling you like it here. Because guess what? We have alcohol! Which is why I'm assuming you're here. Yeah, hit the head right on the, uh, the pinhole. <laughs> you bet you get that a lot. <laughs> um, where'd, uh, where'd Clyde go? Oh, you know Clyde? Yeah. He still owns the place. He just decided to let more of his, um, Colors. Oh. oh, I had no idea. Yeah, neither did Clyde till about four years ago. Oh, great, great for him. Whatever makes you happy, right? Uh, hey, I'm, uh, I'm supposed to meet someone here, and I'm thinking this is, uh, might not. Oh, well, don't worry, they'll find you. Just like you found us. Unless you don't want to be found. Oh, no, no, it's not that. No, just come on up. What can I get you? You got uh, breeder drinks here? <laughs> that and anything with an umbrella. Well, keep the ones with the umbrella. You got uh, sweet vermouth? Sure do. Sweet's good. A uh, Manhattan. Really? Peg you for more of a vodka tonic last kind of guy. I was. I, I was. In grad school. A long time ago. Uh, but uh, taste change. Yeah, make it a double. I, I need an afternoon pick me up. Coming right up, boss. You know, um, for, for a gay bar, it, it doesn't seem very um, <coughs> lively in here. And, and I'm, no, I'm no decorator, but, but the wood paneling, I mean, it, it, it just doesn't scream. Scream. <laughs> hmm. Am I wrong? Well, Tuesday afternoons are usually slow. But uh, if you and your mystery buddy wait till about 6.30, then things will start flowing. Oh, oh, no, I'm not. Flowing? Yeah, I didn't think so. But I said it anyway. <laughs> I, I don't meet many gay people. I, I knew this mix. Latino <laughs> guy from the um, office. Just call us Hispanics. It's nice to know you're not homophobic. Or racist! <laughs> Here, just with the doctor word. You're good. How did you know I was a doctor? Well, let me tell you, when Miss Cleo tells me my plans have a line, I'm as sharp as a tack. <laughs> Plus, I like to use old cliches to make my transitions go nicely. <laughs> that's, that's funny. So, just by looking at you, I would say it was a casual, 
casual day at the um, <laughs> office? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just kidding with you. So you know Clyde, huh? Oh, I, th I thought I did. I mean, not as well as we thought. We, he used to come in here all the time when it was a pinhole. Usually, usually during happy hours, we, we spend hours over in that. I'm loop sorry, over. I gotta take this. Do you let me know if you need anything else? Okay, I'll be fine. I gotta hit the can. I'll be right back. Yeah? You found it, huh? Right where I told you. Yeah, I thought so. Make sure you have it with the tuna fish sandwich. Because the doctor said so. I, I know that Dead is amazing, ain't it? Way to change the subject, like always, Grandma. Seriously? Alright, alright. Well, look, it got really busy in here. I, I gotta go. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of people. Okay. Oh yeah, I love you too. Okay, bye. God. Grandma. Always calling me when I'm at work. You know, she fell down last time and she didn't have one of those help me, I can't get up buttons. So I bought her a cell phone. Guess who calls me every hour? Grandma. Love her to death, but woman drives me crazy. <coughs> By the way, is there anything else I can get you? Yeah, you ran out of toilet paper and Clyde? Oh, shit. Well, Ralph, is, is Clyde here? Um, this is, the, is this the pinhole? Yes. yes. It seems really different. It's a gay bar. <laughs> Marcus? Hi, how are you? Yeah, how are you? It's so wonderful to see you. Too. You're working here, obviously. Yeah, this is my part-time career outside of school. Oh, so, so then this is the pinhole. Because it's still listed as the pinhole on Yelp. It's, it's now called the pink fluorescent. Uh, remember our friend Clyde? Yeah, yeah he, he evolved. He, uh, he went gay. You know, we've been talking for 15 minutes and I still don't know your name. It's rough. You know each other? How do you two know each other? Oh, Marcus was one of my practicum students. We worked together all last semester. Are you teaching this semester? Just one course. I'm teaching ethics. <laughs> <laughs> but I decided to devote a little more time to my private practice. No, that's cool. But well, is there anything I can get you? It's on the house since you got me that A. I'm just kidding. It's on the house. What can I get you? You know, you worked very hard for that A. You definitely deserved it. One of my more promising students. Oh, thanks. Um, let's see. The house cat would be great. Thank you. Coming right up. Make mine a double, Marcus. Sure thing. So, a gay bar with wood paneling. It seems I always did have weird tastes, though. <laughs> Fucking classic. Oh, don't worry. I won't keep you long. Oh, oh, keep me long? I was here too. I, I, I had to entertain myself while I waited. Well, I'm sure that wasn't entirely difficult with Marcus being an excellent conversationalist and you gulping your drinks. Anyway, my last appointment went long and I would have called, but alas, you have no cell phone. Studying. If you guys need anything, let me know. Don't fucking touch me. You seen George recently? Why do you think I'm here? I had dinner with him last night. He was a scattered, aggravated son of a bitch. I would be too if someone took my car. Look. Can we just get this over with, please? What do you have to get over? I went to see our lawyer. Well, my lawyer now, since you haven't paid the bill. And he's sick and tired of trying to find you, so I'm going to need you to sign these papers, even though you're not legally a human being anymore. Or are you? I always had the words sue. I mean, bruise. Ambushing me in the pit. Nice. Get this over with.
Where's my drink? Marcus. Wonderful to see you. Good luck. Thank you. You can ride the <laughs> You know, it was a really good decision when we stopped coming here. Good decisions all around. Where's my drink? Uh, I ordered a double. It Actually, I ordered. I ordered a double a little while ago, so now it's actually a quadruple. Boss! I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad that you're here, but I'm going to have to cut you off. I made some coffee. You can have some of that. What? I don't like coffee. And, and don't call me boss. I never liked being anyone's boss, ever. Okay, I know. But just have a little bit. All right. Look, I'm going to be out this door. I have to meet somebody. Let me know if you need anything. I'll be right back here. Yeah, don't bother. Here, here. That's for drinks. Wait, no. Here. Don't let anybody t tell you that Los Angeles isn't a cold place. Don't, don't even listen to the weather reports. It's cold 24 7. Cold as a bitch. What's your name? I'm Marcus. So why are you texting me, uh, Gigi? Gigi. Uh, my friend Tony told me you might have some work for me. Are we talking about the same kind of work? Because I see you texted me work spelled W-E-R-K. Mm -hmm. Is that a typo? That's just how Tony told me to text you. That's kind of the work I'm looking for. <clears throat> Why don't you just go help out Carl's Jr. or Starbucks? I already did that. Me and Starbucks had to part ways due to creative differences. <laughs> me being artistic and a go-getter. Don't you know artists don't need money? They don't. What do they need? Love and cigarettes, that's all I heard. <laughs> well, this one needs a job or some sort of way to make money. See, art's my thing, but I don't really have time for work, so I want to work with an E. Why should I hire you? I mean, I heard artists are lazy. Why? What, what kind of art do you do? You ever been to a museum? Sure, who hasn't? You want to go to one tonight with me? Forwardness much? <laughs> I bet I like it. My shift is about over. Are you practicing to be a dealer, or are you already one? Wait, when and where does this art adventure begin? Corner of 4th and Magnolia. Nothing more than that. Ooh, secreto, I like it. And don't be late. I hate it when people are late. Sure, I won't be late. Wouldn't want to piss the impatient cute boy off. Oh, and bring a bike. A what? I don't have one. Then steal one. <laughs> Just 
taken my car. It's just a little. What? You have a car? <laughs> you were riding the bus. It's been in the garage. Transmission? I had to be on the bus. I was running errands. Errands? Deliveries? Maybe. You asked too many questions. Come on, let's go. I might have to resort to cannibalism. Dragging him down. Dragging him down? Maybe your son is dragging me down. Or maybe we're both just dragging each other up to where we need to be. Did you ever think of it that way? Don't you have a bedroom in Bel Air you should be sleeping in? I got in a fight with my mom last night. And now I'm fighting with my best friend's mom. Life's great. Look, Isabel. It's 7.30 in the morning. Can you please just, can you please just check your phone and see if you have a message from George? I've been calling him all night and it just keeps going to his voicemail. Nothing. Thank you. Now don't you think it's best that you get going? You know, Gigi would 
like you a lot better if you just, I don't know, listen to him like you used to? What gives you the right? No right. Just, Gigi's my best friend. And I have a mom too, you know. Can you please just let me know if you hear anything? Yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs>
address. Thank you. I'll, I'll be right down. out doing my thing. The wrong place at the wrong time. The guards held me at the yard till the cops showed up. But why didn't you call last night? Just to let me know. You didn't even call Isabel. How'd you know that? Snoring away in the guest bedroom this morning. <laughs> she waited for you all night, George. And I went to bed early and sure as hell didn't think I'd find her there this morning. God, I'm really sorry. I didn't think she was actually going to go. Although I kind of would have liked to have seen that interaction. <laughs> Any entry wounds? Doesn't matter now. How was your... your night? I just thought. Slept. I didn't even care that it was in a cell. You know, I got a call this morning and I had no idea who I was talking to. I just... just knew I had to get down here. I hate that you're in here. Smells to hire retards in here. Nobody wants to talk to me, and I don't want to talk to anybody else. I can tell there's a lot of humanness here, wrapped in a lot of fear and desperation. I'm sure it wouldn't be that bad if, if, I, if it was longer. Do you remember when I, when your father and I, brought you home. You were this beautiful, excited little eight-year-old boy, just full of life, full of excitement. You would jump from every couch and break every chain in the house, just trying to discover it, see how it all worked. And slipping in and out of broken English and broken Spanish. <laughs> You were on this great adventure that would never end, that had no language barriers. And your father and I were so excited. So excited for you to finally get your own room, have your own space. And it was like this celebration for all of us. And we were buddies. Never comes. 
And I am so sorry that I never said those things to you. There was so much I wanted to say. But hey, in two days, you go before the county judge. Are you gonna be able to hang tight? Jive talk in jail lingo now? <laughs> yes, yes I am. But seriously, are you gonna be okay? Yes, I'm strong. I'll be there Friday. We'll get through this. Okay. Yeah, later. 
Hey, bye, Mr. Geraldine. <laughs> Excited to start one and sad to finish one. It's like he had to say bye to it, a friend, you know? It's how I'm seen, or it's at least how I want to be seen. As you can tell, I'm not white. <laughs> I went to a pretty much all white private school as soon as I was adopted. I tried to remain as silent as possible, except for mouthing off in class every once in a while with my funnies. I figured if I could make them think I was valuable as entertainment, then it would delay any new thoughts of how to fuck with me from entering their brains. This one time, this one time I was in middle school going to the bathroom, and some of my most useless classmates followed me into the bathroom. They pushed me into the stall, and they told me that they were merely trying to educate me to the fact that you gays sit when you piss. So they didn't leave until I did. I didn't give a flying fuck, not even with the water and the toilet paper raining down on me. I just stared into the brown stall until the dull metal turned into a rich and pulsing technicolor painting. Eventually the teasing faded and they got bored and left. But since I was already late for class and I didn't know if they were coming back, I decided to start drawing with the red sharpie I had mapped from shop class. By the time the lunch bell rang, the inside of my stall was full of a beautiful fresco of flower and rose blossoms. I figured out that day that when I drew, I drew out a part of myself. And from there on out, I only wanted to make things to look beautiful, even if it was just for me. How do you see me ahead with no horizon in your sight? How do you move ahead when you're always thinking about
good friends. I got a sixth sense about these things. I use the force wisely. <laughs> I don't know if I'm in the mood to bomb tonight. I just wanted to come and check to see if anyone did a go over. But this wall's been calling to me. Finish me, Soka, finish me. <laughs> so why don't you? No mojo tonight. Yeah, I understand. I lost the mojo too. Hey, Jean, I've been, um, I've been thinking about something, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, because we've been friends a really long time, and I love spending time with you. You're my best friend. You make me laugh. You make me smile. You make me a fucking potty mouth, <laughs> and I love it. But I think I need some time alone. I, I just need to figure my shit out. Like, am I gonna graduate from this fucking prison in a month? I'm sorry, I didn't mean, I, I'm at school. <laughs> Anyways, what I'm saying is, I guess if you don't see me around as much, it's not because I don't love you as much. <laughs> I just gotta figure my shit out, you know? You should be a writer. Please. Look, I've been doing some thinking too, and I also have some stuff to figure out. So, if you don't see me as much, I still love you as much. <laughs> you know, I think you're going to need a partner, though. Whatever happened to, um, Marcus? Haven't seen him. Well, you know, anyone who can stand up to me might be worth pursuing. Might be worth pursuing? What if I wanted to do the pursuing? <laughs> what are you doing here? We didn't get to finish our nights. Plus, I thought you might need some help. Uh, I don't usually paint with anyone. So, George, I was at the hardware store, and I found you a bunch of Rust-Oleum paint. So that would be great. So, there's so many colors in here. It's like Baskin Robbins. Robbins. Got a well, you know, we've been looking for things to do in all of your free time as activities together, so I thought this would be great. And, and I brought some towels from the bar. I thought you could use them to clean up. This is nuts. Why do you guys keep appearing like this? We're just here to help, honey. So, hey. Uh, this is some sort of weird artistic intervention. It's too late. You, you've already soaked up my insecurities and strength. And my stubbornness and my resourcefulness. And my do not take one, you know what I'm saying? And my perfectionism, which will help you draw straighter lines. Don't even want, don't even want. Anyway.
my mom. Yeah. My dad. Yeah. Thank you to this awesome cast. Yes. Alejandro, Satya, Megan, Tom, and Carlos. Mm. And my stage managers, Mary Beth and Brian, and my drummer, Aaron.